Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. Today, I'm gonna to be tackling a subject that has been requested in my comments since the beginning of the channel. That's right, today we're gonna to be tackling airbrushing. I am so excited for this because we're finally going to be diving into airbrushing. And you might be aware if you follow me on Instagram that I was sent a Tamiya airbrush unit a little while ago. I've been afraid to use it, however, and I recently discovered a brand new type of airbrush that I think is going to ease me into using this bad boy. So let's talk about that a little bit now. You see, I recently discovered while watching one of Jazz's episodes these USB-C charging airbrush units. They're handheld. They have a compressor that you just hold on to. That is literally your handle and it's got an airbrush on top. And I'm gonna give it a try and see how it works for both priming, both doing a Zenithal and just a standard prime and just see how it feels, ease myself into using an airbrush so that next week I can jump into using the Tommy airbrush and actually paint up a model using it. I'm really, really excited about this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into airbrushing. Now, you guys might remember when I built up the Merkaba tank earlier this year, that is a Tamiya product. And after I did that video, they actually reached out to me and asked if I wanted an airbrush. And I was like, yes, yes, I do. I would love to try that out. However, this is a little intimidating. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little nervous to actually start on this unit. I, even though it seems like it's very user-friendly, I just don't want to ruin this really nice product that they sent me to try. So I was shopping around on Amazon and I came across these auto lock. This is just the brand. I don't, I just picked it because it was the highest rated. It was about $60 online. These airbrushes seem to be meant for doing airbrushing of like spray tans or makeup perhaps, but they do advertise them as being usable for art and miniatures. And I figured, why not give that a try, get a little bit of practice in on this thing. So if I ruin it, I'm not gonna feel so bad. And then I can move on to the Tamiya and actually paint up a model using it. So for now, we're gonna get this thing assembled and actually show you how it works and get to priming some models. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this tiny airbrush because this is the compressor. It is a USB-C powered compressor and it has a little battery on the bottom to indicate what charge it's at. We also have our pen that just simply screws on top, just like so. I'll make sure it's tight. And the way that this one works is you press down to get the air flowing and pull back to release the paint. Obviously there's no paint coming out of it right now because I don't have a paint pot on there. And so that's where you can see your battery gauge there. Absolutely. Lights on when you activate it for a little bit. Don't burn the battery out. There we go. Um, in addition to its normal equipment, it does come with a couple other paint pots, including these larger ones, a charging cable, and a small cleaning kit. All right, and you got the, uh, the, the, gravity, the gravity feed on there, yep. Absolutely, so it's on there. And let's go ahead and actually get some paint in here so we can start using it. Screw off the cap. We're gonna start by putting in some Tamiya uh, paint thinner. I'm gonna do two squirts of this with my eyedropper here. Yes, Tamiya was kind enough when they sent the, um, the, the airbrush we talked about earlier to send us some equipment as well. Absolutely, so I'm gonna just do two little- That's one. Two and squirts. Two. Yeah, I think that's good just for this test. Because we're just going to be trying to prime one or two minis. Exactly. Now, obviously, if you were working on a bigger project, you might either want more of that or to use one of the bigger pots. But that's really subjective to what you're working on. Once we have that in there, I'm going to go ahead and use some Army Painter black paint so that we can get some priming done. I'm going with Army Painter because it's in a dropper bottle and I find like that's going to be easier to get it into this pot without problems. And this is honestly the first time that I've genuinely felt the complaint about the Citadel pots. You've spilled like four different bottles of non oil. One, two. That's true. I think that's probably good. Yeah. Put four drops in, and, and then do I need to mix it? Yeah, all? use the uh, pipette to, to give it a little bit of a stir. All right, so using the pipette just to. And what you're looking for is a milky texture. One drop or two, you think? I got two. Okay, excellent. There we go. Perfect. It's a little bit of a milky consistency. Yes. Seems good. All right, so I'm gonna get the cap on and then we're gonna pop outside and we're actually gonna prime a miniature and see how this thing goes. God help us. <laughs> Throne help us. 
It's that time of the video where I interrupt to tell you about my Patreon and to let you know that we just added a Discord server, which all tiers get access to. So if you're wanting a way to chat with me, share with me your projects, or just tell me what board games you're playing, definitely make sure to check the link below and check out my Patreon. All right, I've got this non 40K space orc and we're gonna go ahead and give him a Zenithal Prime starting with our black. So back. Oh my God, that is immediately working. You can also do it in bursts. I can. Like, yeah. It works so well though. I feel like I have so much more control over my prime, the smoothness, like, I've not had that much trouble with black spray can primers. White ones are the ones that I have the worst struggle with, but this is immediately far superior in my opinion. Like the consistency, the smoothness. I, I wish I honestly had started this a little bit sooner. I know all you guys in the comments have been telling me that for ages, but hey, we're finally doing it now, right? Now I got this guy primed up in black, but I actually want to try a Zenithal prime using the airbrush, but I've never cleaned one of these before or changed paint. So Chaos Cultist, could you give me some guidance? What do yes. I need to do? So the first thing you need to do is we know it's empty. Yes. Uh, we just checked that. Yes. So we don't have a cleaning pot, so we're gonna have to do this a little manually, which is fine. All right. Go ahead and take the cap off of the uh, pot. Yeah, leave the pot screwed on. Screwed on, but keep the take the cap off. Okay, yep, got yep, it. Yep. Excellent. All right. All right, there does look like there's a little bit of paint. That's absolutely so. fine. It'll be fine. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that cleaner that just magically appeared. Excellent. Oh, that's, oh, no, that's a thinner. That is thinner. How dare I take this pot? See, that, that, one, oh, that one didn't magically appear. The magic screwed up. It's true. All it's right. true. It's okay. So open that up. Do not inhale that stuff. It is paint thinner. All right. Um, and go ahead and put in a substantial um, amount into that pot. Like, put all of that in there. Okay. Maybe a little bit more even. Okay, let me just get a little bit of that out. Sure. Get more in. Get more there. All right, it's almost full. Ooh, that's more than we needed. Okay. Okay, sorry. I said a little bit. I didn't mean a All double. of it. Sorry, sorry. It's I just want okay. to really make sure it's clean. Okay, um, well, so here's the problem. Yes. Now, um, <laughs> um, you need to hold that into the sink. Okay. Cover the tip with your finger. Okay. And blow some air because we want to backdraft it. No, no. After that, we went ahead and thoroughly cleaned the entire airbrush, and we have noticed that this has a little bit of a finicky nut on the back here. This thing wants to keep coming loose, and it does seem to prevent some spray, but I think we've got it working again. So let's go ahead and get a Zenithal Prime on this alternative orc model. So I've got the air going, and... Check the nut, hold on. Yep. Yep, it came loose again. Did it? Okay. All right, try again. Yep. Is it working now? It is. Is it? It was. I got some, and then I think it came loose again. It did. All right, I'm just gonna like. Yeah, crank that soldier really, boy. Really, really crank it. So there's okay. a knockoff. So so that's why you don't buy cheap airbrushes. All right, we fussed with it a little bit more, and we're kind of getting some now. Yeah. Okay. Now we're getting it. Now we're getting it. All right. It. We just had a bad clog. It did seem that way. Little bit of splatter there, but honestly not bad. And no. before someone says anything, you should be wearing gloves. I absolutely should be wearing gloves. I'm sorry that I'm not. I actually even do have some, I'm sorry. Um, but this is now working so much better. And look at that Xenophil Prime. Oh my God. Honestly, this is like the best Xenophil I've ever gotten. I also don't do Xenophils that much. I often make you do them, Chaos Focus. Mm -hmm. But this is the best one I personally have ever gotten. And frankly, I am actually very excited for this because this could be really fun for contrast. Because imagine going, like, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna go a little heavier on this prime. Let me uh, adjust my grip a little bit, sorry. Oop, a little too heavy. I really just wanna like, okay. So like this, I would be confident going over with speed paint or contrast paint because I actually think I would get enough highlight out of that still to get some really cool results. And that really excites me, especially since one of the other things that I wanna try with these airbrushes is actually putting contrast paint through them because I just think that would be really cool. It could be really easy for getting base coats done, especially on larger models. Like imagine a tank or a terrain piece, just base coating it in red 
for my space marines or green for my orcs or death guard like it's going to be really cool so let's go inside we'll talk about this a little bit more wrap up this video and next week we're going to come back in and talk about the tamiya airbrush and see how that one works all right that was my first experimentation with airbrushing and i think it went all right this thing, this auto lock airbrush, this handheld one is a little bit finicky. Now I do think one of the issues I was running into other than the fact that it was clogging was the fact that it does not have nearly the amount of air pressure as the Tamiya one. I have in fact turned this unit on, the compressor on and everything just to see what the actual difference was. And it's pretty significant. So I'm actually very excited to try this out next week. However, I do think this might be incredibly useful still for priming and I think maybe base coating with either contrast paints or acrylic inks because those are inherently thinner than traditional acrylic and because this particular unit was really meant for you know makeup and doing sp um, spray tanning and everything like that I don't know if it's specifically designed to work the best and most optimally with acrylic paint which is thicker than what I imagined probably primer for doing body art is. So next week, we're gonna try the Tamiya brush. We're gonna experiment a little bit more. I'm gonna paint up a full model. But before we get to that, I do wanna wrap up this video and give a huge thank you to my patrons because without your guys' support, we would not be making content like this. So thank you guys very, very much. I have been Angela and I hope you have a wonderful hobby night.